Welcome to my tutorial for this Switch exclusive game that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Um, in this game, you can basically, um, when you start off, you can set your lives up to 7. But um, it doesn't really matter what you set it to, but it's better to set it up higher just because you won't have to go out to the continue screen as much, which takes a little longer, since you'll probably be dying a lot. So, um, regardless, if you lose all your lives or if you lose a continue, you have infinite continue, so it doesn't matter, and... You always start at the same checkpoint. The only checkpoints in the game are at the bosses. So you do have to beat a full stage in one life. Um, there's no checkpoints within the stages. So you have to get to the boss. But once you get to a boss, you're locked into that checkpoint. Unless you you know shut the game off or something, then you probably have to start the stage over. Because there's a stage select you go back out to if you actually shut the game off. But you could just leave it in suspend mode and um, t until you beat the boss. You know, go back to it later. But... Basically, you know, you have pretty much infinite continues in lives when it comes down to it because um, there's no, no extra consequence for losing a continue or anything. So this game is pretty much a Kung Fu ripoff style. Uh, I'm going to review the game. I do have some harsh uh, criticism, criticisms of the game. Uh, the hitboxes to me are a little strange. And just some of the layouts will just be packed with a lot of bullshit. And it just feels a little sloppy to me. But you do learn how to play it. Uh, basically, in this tutorial, though, I'm going to break down strats I used for some of the harder parts, because I don't think there's any playthroughs online in the game, at least on YouTube, that I could find. So this may be the only playthrough. I have a regular playthrough, which is this video, and then there's the uh, tutorial version, which is the same footage. It's just going to be me talking over it and giving my strats. So for the first stage, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I kind of just jumping around, fucking around, trying to skip past shit, and you can pretty much play it sloppy until you get to the arrow and... and and get to the first boss. You don't need to, to, to execute anything too too well here. So for this boss, I had a cheap trick. I tri pretty much exploit all the bosses because I don't like fighting them normally. I feel like the fights are pretty shitty and cheap. So I, I play cheap, you know. So um, what I did was very, very precise. I just kind of stay in that one corner and keep punching. And then I duck and punch when he gets in close where his head is attached. And I just tank the hits. As you see there. And that does work. You may have to try that a few times. though. try to copy it exactly how I did it. There's a reason why I did it like that. It was definitely trial and error. For these shorter guys, you want to try to trip kick them. Now, sometimes you can do a regular kick, as you saw there, and take them out. But it's, it's easier to just trip kick the shorter guys. They're, they're the most annoying enemies in the game. as They'll keep rushing into you and draining your health bar. Very irritating. And the hit detection is weird with them. A lot of times I see my foot go through them, and then they hit me anyway. So... Uh, now, maybe it's me, but it did feel a little sloppy to me. So for this stage, what you're going to want to do, you pretty much fight the same enemy stage after stage, but what you're going to want to do is you want to take out the regular enemies to build up your bar in the bottom left. When that's full, you hit the special weapon button. I think it's Y, and you'll use your, your fireball move. You want to do the grounded version where your feet are on the ground. On these uh, black suit-wearing sword enemies is where you're going to use your special move. So save it up just for, this, for the uh, sword enemies, and then unleash it. Now, the last sword enemy, you don't even have to deal with. You can skip to the end once you see the arrow. Though it didn't let me leave right away for some reason. But for this boss, you see, I'm just staying in the left corner mainly again, and I just kind of spam my, my kicks. And I use jump kicks occasionally when it's coming at me to hit it while it hits me. I'm, like, exchanging damage a little bit. But aside from that, you see, I cut it very close, but it does work. And remember, you have unlimited lives and continues on the checkpoints, which are the bosses. So, um, you know, you can keep trying that until you break through. So now we're almost halfway through the game. You can take out these enemies because they're easy enough to take out, and you'll build your bar up so that when the harder enemies show up, you can unleash your fireball again. Or you can do that if you get overwhelmed, as there's a lot of enemies on my ass. I don't remember if there's any of the bigger enemies, like the sword enemies here. There is one behind me, but I may be able to run, uh, ignore him and just keep going and exit the level. Yeah, I didn't even have to deal with that harder enemy. Though he was throwing swords at me and shit, I was able to kind of bust through. So nothing too hard here. So for this, the main time I found the hitter is to just punch her when she's descending up and down and just keep punching her. And you can even get in a jump attack as she's about to leave for a little extra damage. You can also do the jump kick, like I said. Uh, I use the jump kick as she's coming at me for a little extra damage, though I do take damage as well, but it all adds up and I'm able to out-damage her before she out-damages me, which is basically my uh, 
strat for a lot of the bosses in this game as I felt they were pretty sloppy. But yeah, I just stick to the punches when she's going up and down like that. You get a lot of punches in. It's pretty easy when you do it that way. It may take several attempts, but it shouldn't take too long. So now I think this stage may be where the difficulty spikes a little bit on the actual stages, if I remember right. Though I didn't really have a lot of trouble with any of the stages until the final stage, uh, where it felt very fucking cheap. But, uh, you know, I, I found a way to do it, which I'll break down. You're probably going to want to take out the snakes and the hawks, or just at least avoid the hawks if you can go around them. But it is worth taking out some of these enemies because you do want to build your, your meter up in the bottom left, which you, which you build up by damaging enemies, your special move meter. And once that's full, you want to save it up for harder enemies, like these guys. I always pretty much save it up for the sword guys, so I can instantly take them out. So that's one of my main tricks throughout the game that I use. I don't really recommend um, using a rapid-fire controller too much for this game, because sometimes it makes you do extra attacks, so it can be good on some of the boss fights, but you can switch it on and off for some of the boss fights, maybe. But for the regular stages... You don't really want to be doing extra moves. You want to be precise with your strikes. And with rapid fire on, it's easy to do extra moves and, and get stuck in place for longer. So, you know, it can fuck you up. You got to be pretty precise during the actual stages. So this boss was super easy. I kind of just stand in where he's coming at and just do regular kicks mostly. And I, I beat this guy, like, within, I don't know, maybe one try or something. I might have died once because I got there with, without full health. But very easy fucking boss. Easiest boss so far. Maybe the easiest boss in the game. Try to avoid the lightning, but it's really telegraphed. I mean, you're going to see right where the lightning is going to strike, there's going to be a marker on the ground. So uh, just don't stand there. So now we're on the semi-final stage. And the stage itself may be getting uh, a little bit more challenging. It's a little hazy for me. as the, game, the whole game took me around 1 hour and 28 minutes to beat. So uh, most of that time was spent on the final stage, which I found to be pretty cheap. It wasn't really uh, the best kind of difficulty for me anyway. I, I wasn't really uh, too impressed with the way it was executed. It just seemed like they throw a lot more garbage at you, but the hit detection does start to kind of feel a little bit off to me. Maybe it's me, though, you know? I don't know. I didn't spend enough time to really master the game, but I did complete it. So for these bamboo poles that are raising out of the ground, you want to wait for them to raise up and then jump over them when they go back all the way down. Because they can really hit you. Uh, you can't jump over them when they're fully extended. So you got to wait for them. So if you're running through the stage, that will do major damage to you. So you got to be careful with that. It's getting to the point where it's harder to run through the stages. And you really do have to be careful with killing shit and moving. This is probably the easiest boss in the game, actually. All you got to do is go up to this first guy and stay a little bit out of range and just trip kick him to death. I beat that boss first time I got to it. Didn't die at all. So that was, that was the only boss where I didn't have any depth. Super easy. So now we're on the final stage. This is the hardest stage of the game. I have a specific strat that may help players. What you're going to want to do is kill everything except for the blue skulls and the black enemies that are jumping, the ones in the black robes that are constantly jumping. Um, you, you want But everything else you want to kill. Save your special move again for the sword guys, as always. Same strat. But for the black... The black guys, let the black robe uh, women or whatever jump over you and just go under them. They're not fast enough to catch up to you, so just get them behind you and just keep moving. And dodge the blue skulls. Don't attack the blue skulls. And just keep moving forward after you kill all the other enemies. Obviously, don't kill the birds that are above you, because you have to jump to hit them. I don't even jump up to deal with them. I always, I've been ignoring them the entire game. But kill everything else except the black birds, the jumping black robe, and the blue skull. Like, just dodge all that. And kill all the other, you know, all the other enemies you want to kill because you want to build up your bar and you want to get them out of your way. And of course, the biggest threat is those little midgets that rush into you constantly. So be ready to low kick them. But yeah, if you focus on just those enemies that I mentioned, it makes that part pretty easy. And there's a few health replenishments. Now this is the first form of the final boss. Very easy. Just keep kicking it and unleashing your special. It's super easy. Now you get a checkpoint for each one of these forms as well. So. Um, once you kill a form, you're permanently at the next form, unless you, like, shut the game off. But, um, you know, you'll, you'll be at the next form permanently. There's probably about three or four forms. So this one is super easy to exploit. I'll show you what I did here. 
All you got to do here is get just within range and, and use your trip kicks as, as such. Now he's blocking my moves, but as he's blocking my moves, I'm actually building up my special bar. So this is all you have to do. And then when, it, when the bar gets full, you use your special move and then he's dead. So that's it. Super simple. Very easy to exploit. Otherwise, he can be a pain in the ass. He has a lot of moves that are, are you know, do a lot of damage. He can be hard to deal with, but um, very easy to exploit. That's usually the kind of shit I'm looking for in these games. Now I found another positioning kind of trick here. Um, if you stand right here and do trip kicks and then high kicks, but you just stay in this fixed location, you can hit both heads pretty easily. And when you build your bars up, you want to launch your fireballs as both heads are down below within your range. Make sure you use them at the right moment, because if you don't use them at the right moment, you're not going to get the damage from them. See, like that. And, you know, th your life is going to go down fast. So, that's all you really have to do, though. If you do that enough times, you will get it. Just stay in that position. Use low and high kicks on the, on the dragon heads whenever you have um, open shots on them. And, you know, use your fireballs as those meters fill up. But use them when the dragon heads are low to the ground. So that you, you, know, you have a better chance of getting those hits in. And you can do a lot of damage with those fireballs. There's two health bars for that dragon. One for each head. So you got to strip them both. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Hopefully that will help players have an easier time with the game. The game did give me some trouble just because I found it to be a little sloppy. Uh, you know, especially during the final stage I felt like um, a lot of times you know, my hits wouldn't go through. But maybe it was just me not playing well. I didn't spend a ton of time with the game. Like I said, I beat it in about an hour and 28 minutes. I think it's an okay game. Um, when I review it, I'm, I'm probably going to go along the lines of saying I think it's a decent game. But definitely not worth the 15 bucks I paid for it. But at least I got some content out of it. If you have any questions, let me know. And thanks for watching.